There are a lot of people who want to get a pet frog, but can't decide which species to get. Do you want one that gets pretty big or stays kind of small? Do you want one that's pretty loud and loves to sing, or one that will stay pretty quiet? In today's video, I am going to be sharing several different species of frogs so that you can decide which is the best pet frog species for you. everyone, welcome to or back to the channel. My name is Hunter Hauk, and I keep a variety of reptiles and amphibians, including, uh, well, technically one species of frog and one species of toad. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing what are, in my opinion, the top five best pet frogs that you can get. Now, before we even get into this, I just want to say, if you're thinking about getting a frog so that you can, like, handle it and stuff a lot, don't, because you really shouldn't handle your frogs very often at all. They have porous skin, they do gaseous exchange, that's how they get a lot of their air and all of their water, so the oils on your hands are very harmful for them, and if you stress them out, quite frankly, they can die. So please do a ton of research and don't just get one so that you can hold it a lot. If you do think that frogs are the right species for you, today's video should help you decide which species to get. These are listed as the top five species of frogs in general, not in any particular order. So basically, at the end of this video, hopefully you will have found a frog species that sounds perfect to you so you can go and do more research on it specifically. The first frog on this list is the Pac-Man frog. Now, Pac-Man frogs are a very popular pet frog and for good reason. They are members of the Ceratophrys genus and there are several species of Pac-Man frogs to choose from. The most popular ones are Ceratophrys cornuta and Ceratophrys um, cranwelli, and then there's also Ornata, and I can't honestly remember their scientific names, but they are very popular pet frogs. Pac-Man frogs get up to eight inches, so you don't have to have a huge enclosure for them like you would a lizard that was eight inches, but you of course can't have something tiny either. Pac-Man frogs cannot live with other frogs because if you put them together, they will try to eat each other and that doesn't end very well. Many Pac-Man frog keepers say that they are great for first-time frog owners. Now, I've never personally owned one, but I have many friends who have them and I have interacted with them in the past and they are just absolutely lovely. They need at least a 20-gallon enclosure as adults, but as babies, you'll want to start out with something like a 10-gallon and then work your way up to the 20 over time. They are super awesome frogs. They're not great for handling, but that's the same with all species of frogs. They are super lazy. They are sit and wait predators. So basically they'll just kind of do their thing. They might move around a little bit to get some water or get a different amount of light, but most of the time they'll just kind of stay in one place and they love to eat. If all of those things sound great, then a Pac-Man frog might just be the right pet frog for you. Now, let's move on to number two on this list, which is the White's Tree Frog. So I personally have one White's Tree Frog. Um, I did have two White's Tree Frogs, but unfortunately Parker, um, in case you didn't see that video, Parker did pass away. We're not entirely sure what, but he had an awesome life. He just must have had some sort of issue that we weren't able to notice. I had an artist make this adorable little thing for him so I can always remember him. But I absolutely love White's Tree Frogs, and I plan to get another one to be friends with Prada. I'm just not entirely sure when. Now, White's Tree Frogs also have the nickname Dumpy Frogs, but their real name is the White's Tree Frog, and that is because they were discovered by a naturalist called John White. This was in the late 1700s, so he decided that he was going to name them after himself, which I mean... If I discovered a frog, I would name them after myself. That's pretty cool. White's tree frogs can live up to 20 years, so please don't impulse buy one. Make sure that you want to have your white's tree frogs for a long time. White's tree frogs love companions. They technically don't need one, but like I said, I had two, and I definitely plan to get another one so that Prada can have a friend because I find that they do benefit from having companions. They Unlike a lot of reptiles, they actually benefit from it. They enjoy sleeping together, bathing together, and white tree frogs love to eat together. And in general, they love to eat. They are always voracious feeders, voracious feeders. So I have some very funny clips of white tree frogs eating that I'm sure you've been seeing because they love to eat. That said, that makes them prone to obesity, which can cause them to live a lot less 
which, yeah, that's never good. So definitely make sure that your white tree frogs are a healthy weight, even though they will eat pretty much as much as you want to give them. When they are adults, they need at least an 18 by 18 by 24 enclosure, which I believe is 33 gallons. But personally, I think that a 40 gallon breeder tank is even better for them as adults. This is if you're getting two, but for each additional frog, I would say you could get three in a 40 gallon breeder, but any more than three, you'll want to add 10 gallons per frog. Now, if you think that white tree frogs are the right ones for you, be sure to do a lot of research, but they are awesome frogs. Now we're gonna move on to our next species, which is the Starry Night Reed Frog. If you are looking for a very cute, very beautiful, and very small tree frog that does well in groups, and you have some experience with frogs, these might be the perfect pet for you because they are beautiful, and they are relatively easy to care for, but they're not typically recommended as a beginner species because they do require some intense care that a first time owner might not exactly know how to provide them. They are very small frogs. They reach one and a half inches as adults. And that's like on the larger end. Now the pro is because they are super small, you can keep four to six of them in a 20 gallon enclosure and that is just super cool because you can have a big colony of them, see how they interact, and they are beautiful to watch. So that is definitely a big pro, but a downfall to Starry Night Reed Frogs because they're so small is they have tiny little mouths, which means you have to be willing to get some tiny, tiny little feeder insects, which aren't always the easiest to find. Now in captivity, they look a lot different than the ones in the wild. Um, there are just different localities of them, so Throughout this, you've probably seen me put in pictures and videos of a number of different localities, so that's why they all look pretty different, so you can kind of pick whichever one you like. Personally, I love the group of them that Josh's Frogs has, and if I were to get them in the future, that's where I would get them from. Not sponsored or anything, but I just love Josh's Frogs. Now our next frog is very similar to the White's Tree Frogs, but they're a little different care-wise and they are a little bigger, and they're very unique. That's the Amazon milk frog. Now, Amazon milk frogs are very beautiful frogs. Typically, they're blue or green with some black banding, and they get their name because when they feel threatened, they secrete kind of a milky substance that's poisonous to uh, things that are trying to eat them. Now, like I said, that's only when they feel threatened, and in captivity, it's very, very uncommon for them to secrete that milky substance that they're named after because in captivity, you're hopefully not trying to eat your milk frogs, but also they're used to people and they know that people equal food, so they're gonna love you. Like I mentioned previously, their care is pretty similar to White's tree frogs, but they are also tree hollow breeders, which means in the wild, they often like to spend a lot of their time in a hollowed out tree trunk with some water at the bottom, and that is how they breed in the wild. So in captivity, a lot of people choose to provide a nice big bioactive enclosure with a mimic tree hollow with some water at the bottom. Now this can be kind of difficult to set up because it's hard to keep a water feature clean with frogs because they like to eliminate in their water features. but that's a super cool feature of an enclosure, so they would absolutely love it if you're able to put it in there. They are a larger tree frog. They get three to five inches as adults when they are males, and the females do get larger because they have to have room to carry the eggs. They need at least a 30 gallon per pair, but a 40 gallon is typically better. They are, like I mentioned, bigger than white tree frogs, so yeah, there's that. Just like most tree frogs, they do very well in groups, they absolutely love spending time with each other. And did I mention they're absolutely beautiful? Because they are absolutely beautiful. If you think that they're the right pet for you, go for it. Do lots of research, but I think that they would be an awesome animal. This next frog species, number five, is a very, very unique species of frog. And this is the chubby frog or Asian banded bullfrog. Now, oh my goodness, they are super cute. They are a terrestrial frog, which means that they live on the ground as opposed to many frogs which live in the trees. Now they are a microhylid or narrow-mouthed toad, which fun facts, narrow-mouthed toads are actually frogs, not toads. But that means that they're related to 
a species of frog that if you live in the southern United States, you've probably seen in your backyard, which is the narrow mouth toad. They have these adorable little faces and they just love life, it seems like. They always seem to be happy. They're so cute. Now, chubby frogs aren't typically the most active frogs. They, just like Pac-Man frogs, are sit and wait predators, which means that most of the time they're just gonna sit there and wait for you to bring them their food. That said, if you have a bioactive enclosure, you're probably gonna have some insects or arthropods, such as isopods, in there. And that means that there's gonna be some stuff going around in there, so they're gonna have more motivation to walk around and eat their isopods, which is actually very healthy for them. A friend of mine is fostering one, and she says that her chubby frog that she's fostering loves to eat its isopods, so that's a cool way to give them some enrichment and keep them active. They are super small frogs. I guess I shouldn't say super small, considering there are like the, there's a genus called mini, and they are very tiny, hence why the scientists named them that, but they are relatively small frogs. They get two to three inches, which that means that you can have them in a smallish enclosure. They also do pretty well in groups, so you can have two or probably no more than two of them in a 20 gallon, but if you were to have a 40 gallon, you could have three or four chubby frogs and they would absolutely love that. To conclude, the top five pet frogs, in my opinion, are the Pac-Man frog, the White Tree frog, the Starry Nights Reed frog, the Amazon milk frog, and the chubby frog, or Asian banded bullfrog. Which was your favorite species on this list? Be sure to comment down below. You can also let me know if you keep any of these species on this list, or any frogs in general. Is there a species that you think should have been on this list that I didn't include? Definitely comment down below because I would love to hear that. I always love your insights and definitely go read the comments too because someone else might be naming a frog that you're like, I've never heard of that. And you could go Google it and be like, hey, this is the best pet frog for me. So definitely see what other people have to say because we always learn a lot from each other. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reptile and amphibian videos. Now leave a comment and let me know if you want me to make more frog related videos because I love making them, but sometimes they don't do the best. So I would love to know if that's something that you all are interested in seeing more of. If you want to get some of my merch, which I do have a design with frogs on it, you can head to shop.hunterhawk.com. That is my store and that really supports the channel. That helps me keep doing what I'm doing and I really appreciate all of the support. Now, if you want to get behind the scenes posts of my reptiles and amphibians, plus other behind the scenes content, you should definitely join the Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And I post on there almost every day, so it is super awesome. And that's another great way to support the channel. Once again, my name is Hunter Hauk, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, but until then, goodbye.